Hi guys, it's Chris at Court and Crown. It was the most sad I tried. Still in Devon, um, in the bedroom. The first one I did was in an echoey sort of corridor. That wasn't very good. The one I did yesterday was a bit better, so I've, I've stuck to that place. It's not quite so echoey. There's not so much flickering from the lights either. Um, so yesterday we did a sparkling cider made in the champagne method, a traditional method, to be correct, because it's not made in champagne, therefore you can't call it the champagne method. I have to call it the tr traditional method. By a guy called Simon at Yards uh, Yard Cider. I think that's, what, that's the name of the business. Anyway, it was very good. Liked it a lot. But I said at the end of the film that we we're going to do something today that was totally different. Totally different. And to demonstrate how different it is, oh, I have a visual representation. So you remember yesterday's was a beautiful bottle with a crown with a, with a beautiful sort of cork. It was a champagne bottle with a champagne cork and sort of a crown on it to sort of keep it sealed. Well, today's container looks like that there you go that's five liters of farmhouse cider that's the smallest container they did that's what i bought 6.5 percent so uh pretty strong so uh this is redaway's cider um also not very far away in devon um family farm we drove past their orchards to get to the little farm itself go to a little room in the back like a like a like a cellar. It's at the back of the house, but it's just got one door. It's like a cellar. It's really cool, thick walls, um, uh, cobbled floors, lots of very old barrels in there. Beautiful. Uh, I'll post some images on the uh, uh, Instagram when I post up about this particular film. I'll put some of the images I took up on Instagram so people can see these beautiful old barrels. So this is a still cider. It's a blended cider. Uh, their son, whose name I forget, uh, was actually pressing... Apples were there, actually harvesting and pressing. I think he was pressing Michelin when I, Michelin when I was there. And he had the, an electric press, but he had the cheeses, the cloths making the cheeses with the layers to press the juice out. Very traditionally done, all done by hand. Uh, he was collect, collecting all the pommes in like a bathtub <laughs> with a bucket and stuff. It was brilliant. Uh, proper like make do mend, proper farming. It was great. Um, yeah, they're making uh, basically still cider, aged in oak, left for at least two years. This is the medium. Uh, so yeah, very, very different. This is very traditional Southwest England cider, more associated more with Somerset, I guess. This is the first one I've had like this from Devon. Um, but yeah, this is kind of a traditional West Country cider, if you like, traditional Somerset slash Devon cider. Totally different to the sparkling champagne method stuff we had yesterday, which is very non-traditional in a sense. And if it was made anywhere, I would suspect more in Herefordshire, where they did more experiment, experimentation and sort of Fine cider, whatever that term actually means, I'm not sure, but sort of fine ciders, if you like. Um, if you can hear my crazy kids making a noise in the background, I apologise. But they're crazy kids, what are you going to do? So, uh, let's pour this out. Well, that's a great shot. I can mean, through this glass. Um, looks a bit mad. Can I pour this out without spilling it? Let's try. Oh, 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 I can pour it out without spilling it. That'll do, that'll do. Okay. So I've just had a little taste of this already, as you can probably see. From the bit that's missing from the top. Not much. Still got quite a few litres left to go. So, still cider. So no bubbles. Uh, unfiltered, of course. As you can see from there. Um, lots of different varietals in here. And lots of different varietals. I, I couldn't even begin to list them. Um, so let's give it a sniff. So, first and foremost, what you get is that acidity. That acidity you get with the traditional... Um, sort of barrel-aged West Country ciders. They put a lot of acid apples in there. Acid is a preservative, so it helps preserve the, uh, the juice, which is going to go through a very like a slow fermentation and conditioning over a long period of time, certainly through the winter months into the summer, spring, summer of the next year. And this has been sitting for two years, you know, and that, that malic acid oil from those uh, sharp apples will convert to lactic acid and give you much, um, a softer, softer acidity. So we've talked about that a lot. Um, sometimes I think you can get a trace of acetic acid in these things as well, so oxygen sort of penetrating and uh, acetobacter uh, doing a little bit of um, acidification, converting alcohol, ethanol into acetic acid, which I don't mind, some people don't like that, doesn't bother me, I quite like a little bit of it. So, yeah, so the, the, the acidity is the thing you get first and foremost on the nose, and this marks it out as a classic West Country farm cider, to me, to me. Well, there's some rich sort of ripe aged apple in the background as well, no doubt, on top of that, acidity. All right, let's try it. Okay, so this is the medium. 
So back sweetened to taste, but not too too sweet. It's reasonably sweet because of that acidity. Balances the um, the sourness really well. Balances it really well. It's classic. Reminds me of like the Crossmans that we've had, and maybe Wilkins that we've had. But the thing that's really different about this cider, I'm just going to try once more. The difference with this cider is the texture. The texture in the mouth is ridiculous. It's kind of thick and viscous. It's almost like I'm drinking single slash double cream. The texture on my palate, it's thick in a way that I don't think they're experienced with this cider before. It's incredible. The texture is just incredible. So you've got this bold acidity, this, this ripe apple character, then this thick, viscous sort of mouth-coating texture. It almost feels like it's got some sort of gelatin in it or something like that. It's incredible. It's a really good cider. It's a really good cider. Um, brilliant. Sugar is balanced perfectly with acidity. Great apple character. Um, the texture is amazing. The mouthfeel is amazing. Um, yeah, I think if I could get hold of this, I could sell a lot of this stuff. It's a top-notch, proper cider. And totally different to what we had yesterday. Totally different. And quite different to the hunts we had tasting before that as well. Which was like, um, I think, pretending to be this. And it wasn't this at all. In any way, in, in any way, shape or form. Um, this is what people would have drunk on the farm. You know, this is what people would have drunk on farms when they were working. That's kind of what it was for. People were paid until relatively recent history. People were paid in cider who worked in agriculture on farms in the southwest of England. I don't think that got banned until the late 19th or early 20th century. You know, so this is proper real cider, and it's brilliant and brilliant. And the texture is off the scale. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you, Redaways. Okay, guys. Three quite different signs we've had in Devon so far. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get hold of anything else. I've been looking around for stuff. Haven't found anything that I felt was worth picking up and tasting. Because when we were in Devon last trip, I did a few then as well. So, yeah. So, the next time you see me, I might well back be, uh, be back in London in my shed. But perhaps not. Either way, thanks for joining me. And until the next time, cheers.